Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yom Shabbat Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video They Fought Side by Side with the Israelites in 70 AD, but will not be saved or delivered. So what I did was I put in Edomite fought side by side with Israel, 70 AD. This is what came up. The Edomites fought side by side with the Jews or the Israelites in the rebellion against Rome, which were Edomites. So you had Edomites taking the side of the Israelites to fight against other Edomites. Because the Ro the white Romans, I'll use, I'll use that term, white Romans, are descendants of the Edomites. And it's, it's very easy to uh, prove. Just compare the architecture of Rome and to the architecture of Petra. And we did videos on this. As a matter of fact, the Roman legion was based upon Esau's military. They had what was called a legion. They didn't call it a legion at that time, but they had they had a certain number of, if it was 5,000, they had a, maybe, maybe about 600 horsemen, and the rest were a footmen. So your Roman legion was basically the army, the um, military tactics of the Edomites if you if you go to Google and you put in Petra and you get a wide shot you get that that uh, castle looking thing it looks like something out of the Roman Empire but as you pan if you go to a map and you pan back you know a wide shot you'll see not too far from it a uh, stadium which just look, looks just like your stadiums that you have in America, which proves this is Rome all over again. There's stadiums all over the place, just like back in pagan Rome 2,000 years ago. But you had a, a big uh, stadium, which they call the Amphitheater, or um, what else did they call it? Um, a yeah, stadium. We call it a stadium. They call it the Amphitheater. The... Uh, the amphitheater that was built during the time of uh, Vespasian, uh, Titus, and Domitian was known as the Flavian Amphitheater, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I hadn't did a video on that in a while. So, the, <laughs> you, you guys are the, are the Edomites, you Romans, and you will, and you can't, you can't ignore the fact that the ancient Romans, anytime they make a movie, who's going to play? The Caesar and the Roman people, they're going to, they're always going to get white. They're going to get, always going to get so-called white people. They're not going to have Chinese people. They're not going to get Chinese actors to play Roman characters. So, cause we all know that the Romans are so-called white people and that they descended from Edom. So it says here, when I put this up, it says the Edomites fought side by side with the Jews, the Israelites, and the rebellion against Rome in A.D. 66 to A.D. 70. Actually, from 66 to uh, 70. To really, it, it goes beyond 70 to 74. The last, one of the last strongholds was Masada, where they had them. The Israelites had a called for a suicide uh, pact and they said we're going to kill ourselves so the Romans wouldn't have uh, pleasure in killing us so you can go into that history and there was an actual movie called Masada uh, so it says uh, the Edomites fought side by side with the Jews or the Israelites in the rebellion against Rome in AD 66 to AD 70 Keyword was 70. And there, and 
and were crushed. Who were, who was crushed? The Edomites and the Israelites, because they fled. A lot of them died. Yeah, our our Lord and Savior Yahushai told them. We're talking. Um, we're talking almost f about forty years before uh, this time period. Yahushai prophesied of the Romans sacking Jerusalem, and that when you see the abomination that makes us desolate, desolate, the abomination are the Romans that maketh desolate, destroyed the the temple. They they raided the uh, temple and they got all the treasures out of the temple. And um, I believe it was after they used that to build that that um, Flavian um, uh, Flavian uh, Amphitheater, which is the stadium, because they wanted to build. Everybody was at that time during the time of the uh, after Nero or Nero, the uh, the year of the uh, four emperors or four Caesars. You can look that up too. This you had you had um the first emperor was uh was Galba. You get get the order if I'm not mistaken, Galba was first, Otho was second, Galba died inside of months, well he got killed. And it was behind Vespasian doing it it was behind him giving he 'cause he was in good with the uh the guards. Patrician gods. So you had the uh, you had Otho, then Galba. He he reigned for a couple of months, and then he was put to death. No, actually, he killed himself. Then you had Vitalis. He reigned for a number of months. The exact numbers months I don't remember. Got to go back to it. It's not all that important. He was put to death by the by the orders of uh conspiracy of by uh uh Vespasian. The Vespasian sat up I believe it was nine years, something like that. He had uh he had he had ruled. But during that time period people were saying Rome is dead. Rome is dead. Can you imagine in the United States you had a president get assassinated, then you get another president and the vice president takes over. Two months later he gets assassinated. You get another you get the what's the order? You get the uh well the the vice president's gonna have to have a vice president, then that vice president comes in and he commits suicide. So back to back you got three individuals that are dead in, in less than a year. Within inside of a year. You're going to start saying that's an omen from the Most High, that the Most High is destroying this, this place, America, which is Rome all over again. So that was, when you go into the history, so that's good to, there's all kind. there's no excuse. There's a, many YouTube pages that go into the Roman history that they'll get actors to play the different Caesars and so forth, and they'll go into the history, they'll give you the documents and everything. So you don't got to sit there and read all day. You watch videos. They had a series on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on Netflix of the Roman Empire. And they were act they were accurate. They got one now on um, Netflix on Alexander the Greek. The Great, I call him the Greek. And I was watching, and it's a series, a docudrama. They would have a actors play the different characters and then they would have a a uh an expert a, a a scholar a historian or whatever and they would speak about different things then they would then they would have the actors play the roles you know and even in that that documentary they showed that uh alexander was in the men they even show a scene where he was get, get you know getting it in with a man but not full sex but they were in a in a in a lake, and they started kissing each other and shit, you know, and then you had the, the, uh, one of the, um, narrators, or one of the, uh, scholars say, 
Well, that was that was a no. That was a known thing. That that that, that was the norm. <laughs> they said that. They said that was that was the norm. That wasn't a big the big thing. That was the norm. Yeah, because they're Edomites, man. So anyway, it says. It says that the uh, Rome in a eighty sixty seven to seventy, and were crushed by Rome. Who was crushed by Rome? The Israelites, and the Edomites. But it's mainly talking about the Edomites. It was they were crushed by Ro Rome. But let, check this out. Now, this this show this proves that they know that they're the Edomites. So what what they're saying is, oh, not them. We're not Edomites because the Edomites were done away with. They're hoping like hell that the Edomites were done away with, so they can. So if the if the Edomites are actually done away with. That means there's no such thing as Edomites. Edomites do not exist. That means when you call me an Edomite, I'm not an Edomite. The Edomites are done away with. Why are you calling me an Edomite? It says never to be heard of. <laughs> Wait a minute. The 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 the, people, the Herodians, <laughs> the Herodians were the Herodian dynasty. Dynasty means powerful. Lucy translated means powerful, powerful family. That means they had sons, they had daughters, they had uncles, they had fathers, they had mothers, they had nephews, they had cousins. So it wasn't, you didn't have one Harrod, one Harrod and his sister, no. You had a dynasty. And then the Herodian dynasty, Harrod had his men of war. The Herodians had their own personal army, which was called um, Harrod's men of war his own personal army that worked with the Roman military. When they um put took out the babies, the, the baby boys, two years old and under, <clears throat> it was the personal army working with the Romans to to kill those babies. When they captured the um Yahweh Shai, it was uh the Herodians, or they got him, they got him, and the, the the ones that were beating him down and all that and spitting on him, those were Edomites, from and uh, working with the Romans to put hell on 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 Yahweh Shai. See, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand that the Herodian dynasty had their own personal army. So you had Edomites fighting on the side of the Israelites, and you had and they were fighting other Edomites that knew that they were Edomites. Some of them were related, and then you also had the Romans, which were Edomites. But listen, listen to this. It says uh, that the Edomites were crushed, and Israel did a coin Judah copter. Oh, and they made a big. They they had parades. They had parties. When they destroyed the Israelites, when they took that kingdom down, and the, a lot of them fled, but a lot of them were put to death, they had parties, they had celebrations, they they, they minted coins, and it was Domitian, the younger brother of uh, of uh, Titus, that put up uh, an honorary arch uh, to uh, his brother, and it's still standing today. And they show you, if you go to it, matter of fact, you know what? Let me do this. You find, you're finding out that when you study these scriptures, you have to go into the history of that time. The archetypes, the archetypes. The Ark of Titus, Rome. Okay. Let me go to images. Okay, this is still standing to this day. Okay, how old is the Ark of Titus? Uh, Titus, I already know that. Titus of Rome. What did, what did Titus do for Rome? Let's, let's, let's go into this. The big head Titus, the com, uh, the commanded, 
Titus commanded a Roman legion in Judea in 70 CE, or the current era, uh, what is that, the cur uh, current era, I believe it's common era, I'm sorry, he led a campaign that, which was really, the the real, the real uh, governor was really um, Julius Alexander Tiberius, however you want to place them words, which was a Jake, I believe he's, Aust this guy, Austin, this guy was just in the hospital, he's the secretary of, uh, of uh, the military, the the cumul culminated in that culminated in the capture and destruction of Jerusalem. Titus became the Roman Empire in seventy nine. He completed construction of the Flavian Amphitheater, and I spoke about that. And part of the money was from they got they they were heavily taxing the Israelites. That's what the the rebellion was all about. Better known as the Colosseum. And open it with ceremonies lasting more than a hundred days. And the ceremonies was look, we took down the Israelites. They even minted a coin called Judah Copter. Let me look at look at this one. The three uh, themes of the of visual pr propaganda introduced in the petalic marble reliefs uh, sculptures of art of the arch of Titus. Imperial apotheosis equally between emperors and deities. Because if you sat down as an emperor, you was really a god. You, when you go into the history of the, of the ancient Romans, they, they used to say, look, if you speak bad about the, the, the Caesar, you're going to burn in hell. So look it up. I'm not going to look it up for you. And military triumphs over what? Over the Jews, the Israelites, were echoed in latter Domitianic, or his younger brother, official documents, his brother's Domitian documents, including the temp Templum Gentis Flavia. You know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Judah Copter coin. Here we go. Judea Copter coinage. Judah Copter coins also spelled Judah Copter, which was they didn't use J, it was Judah Judah Copter, were a series of commemorative coins originally issued by the Roman Empire Vespasian to celebrate the capture. Come back here. To celebrate the capture of in you know, for them taking down Israelites. Now look at this. Wait a minute. I gotta check this out. Okay, this is Donald Trump. Look at this, look at this, look at this right here. That's Donald Trump. As he's Donald Trump, not Nero. You got the menorah. Yeah, Donald Trump is definitely Nero Caesar. He looked just like Nero Caesar. Minus the chin beard. What coin was struck by Vespasian on the capture of Jerusalem? What is the meaning of Judicopter? 
to celebrate their triumph over Jerusalem, the Romans produce a huge issue a huge issue of commemorative coins, not just one coin, known as Judah Capta. Judah Capta, Yahweh Capta, cap captured, taken down. Look at this. What does Judah mean in Hebrew? Eh, pra praise is half of it. The word the word means praise Yahweh. Or Yahweh praise or Yahweh thanks. I ain't even got that right. So anyway, let's come back over here. Let me go to images now. I want to get a close up. Okay, let me see what this this is. Okay, so this is them when the abomination that maketh desolate enter into the holy place, then flee ye into the mountains. Prophecy that Yahweh Shai made <coughs> about forty years, thirty some odd years before this happened. And you can see them, these are Romans, they take they took the menorah, which is pure gold. They took anything that that was worth anything as far as wealth is concerned, money is concerned. So they commemorated the they commemorated <coughs> Domitian built this to commemorate the his brother. He said, Yeah, you took down these Israelites. And we're gonna show that we stay. They showing you that look, we stole your shit, we took your shit. As the saying goes, to the victor goes the spoils. So this is what they're gonna have to pay for. This is actually a picture of the. And this this could have cost hundreds of millions of dollars. This is pure gold menorah. And these were the, the, the Romans. They said, we're just taking this shit. That's it on that. Now, let me come back over here. So we bring up this information we to, to show you that we're not making it up. We're not just saying... Speaking out of the side of our mouth. What is the significance of Edom in the Bible? There's a lot of stuff on Edom. Meet Edom, Israel's evil twin. Okay, they told the truth. Meet Edom, Israel's evil twin. And he's still e evil, and he's still here. But they refuse to call themselves the Edomites. That's why they say the Edomites are done away with. I'm sounding like a broken record here. But, so now, let me do this. Where am I? Okay, so this is a video that was put up by Holy Bible Defenders, which is um head elder of uh the Baltimore camp by goes by the name of Karata Zaba. I'm not gonna let you hear it because you know how YouTube get down. But I'll read it. So it says here had Esau been happily, whatever, would not want to kill Jacob, Esau equals Edom. Uh, King Herod, the Idumean, which is the Latin, or the Greek form of saying uh, Edom, not the Greek way of saying red. Idumea, which is Edom, the Edomites, Esau is Greek for Edom. Esau mixed with the descendants of Ishmael, much of the Arabs. So this is what this guy is saying. You got to listen to this. If I remember, I'll leave the link in the description box. If I don't, this this video was put up 10 hours ago. Holy Def Bible Defenders. Sometimes I forget to put the link up, but if I remember, I'll put the link up. So this guy's a 
so-called Bible expert. It says Esau mixed with the descendants of Ishmael, meaning they're pretty much Ishmael, the Ishmaelites. So some of the Ishmaelites are actually Edomites. Much of the Arab world carries the gene of Esau. Ottoman Turks, uh, Sir which are Kazakhs, Syrians, Kurds of Iraq, Turkey, to play large to pl to play large role to play a large role in end times. Majority of Muslims are related to Esau, so they, in other words, that's called um, projecting. You, 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 no, we're not the Edom. No, we're not the Edomites. The Edomites are Arabs. They're Tur Turkish people. They're Syrian people. Those are the Edomites. They do this dance with the sword, by the sword. They do, you know. So now let's let's what, look at this. As if for now, just know that much. Uh, don't mind. By no means. By no means. By no means. All of the Arab world carries with. I can go to the the matter of fact. Let me do this. Let me go to the uh, uh, sh uh, transcripts. Okay, it carries with them genes of Esau, in particular, a large segment of uh, the Turkish population. Is related to Esau. Yeah, you got the Turkish are related to Esau, but the Kazakhs are also related to Esau as well. And you current, you know, white people today are descendants of Esau. Some some of the people that look like Esau, Esau are white people are Jake too. Uh, Esau, uh, uh, as as are most Assyrians, and Assyrians are not Edomites, and Kurdish people, people of Iraq, uh, we should at, at least have heard of the Ottoman Empire, which ruled the Middle East for many centuries, from about 1300, which was the, they started to take down the business, the so-called Byzantine Empire, which is Israelites. That was at the beginning of their thousand-year uh, reign. When, when you go into Gog, Magog, uh, to just after World War One, the Ottomans were a dominant tribe in the nation of Turkey, and it was these. And oh, by the way, to show you that the Turks were Edomites, the Tur the the Turks, the Turkish government or the Turks are part of uh, NATO. There's only Edomites or so-called Europeans that are members of NATO. The EU, there's like 30 EU members, and they're all none of them are African, Chinese, East Indian, Arab. NATO, European nations, which includes uh, Turkey. And yes, they're Edomites, but the American white man, you're you're a bunch of Edomites too. He's deflecting and projecting, and he should know. Particular Turks, who are direct descendants of Esau, and of course, these Turks are Muslims. They're Muslims. Edomites are really Muslim. The the. Religion of choice for the Edomites are the religion of Islam. And we know from Bible prophecy that the Turks are going to play a primary role in the event of a revelation as enemy right. We, we, we know that, the Edomites. This proves that the Edomites are not done away with. As enemies of Israel, the true Israelites all come together doesn't doesn't it the thing we must also understand is that the majority of Muslims in this world are in some way way or another related to Esau even the 
ones in Afghanistan. So basically, when we say, look, you guys are the Edomites, we're not the Edomites. The Turkish people are Edomites. The people of, uh, of Afghanistan are Edomites. The Arabs are Edomites. The religion of the Edomites is Islam, which we know better. Which we, which, in order for you to teach a lie, you have to know the truth. In order for you to teach a lie, you have to know the truth. So they know that they're the Edomites. So let me come back over here. Let me read this again. The Edomites fought side by side with the Jews, the Israelites. Now, why did the Edomites, why did certain Edomites fight side by side with the Israelites? Because they wanted to get into the kingdom. So a lot of them said, no, yo, man, we better get on their good side. And they were willing to, to die to get into the kingdom. And they are going to get into the kingdom, but they're going to be slaves in the kingdom. I don't give a damn what you did in the past. John Brown, if he's an Edomite, he's going into captivity with his sons. And were crushed by Rome, never to be heard of as people again. Well, wait a minute. Hold up. This guy's saying different. He said, yeah, the Edomites are here, but they're in Iraq, Iran. Uh, Turkey, they're the Kurds, they're the Afghani people, and they all, they all embrace the religion of Islam. <laughs> That's what he's saying. So you can watch this video. They have to get away from the fact that they're uh, the Edomites. Okay. And let me show you briefly that there's no chance for Edomites, any Edomites to make it. All right here, Malachi 1. I love Jacob and I hated Esau. For that woman, a big bosom, bimbo, the black bimbo, talking about, yeah, that's talking about Esau. It ain't talking about his descendants. Let me see. Let's let's see if if not, it's not it's only the Most High hates Edom or Esau, but he doesn't hate the Edomites. He just hates the first Edomite. Ezekiel. What is that? Thirty-five. We can also go to thirty-six. Let's we'll start from the first verse. We normally jump right to the source prophecy against Mount Seir moreover the word of Yahweh came unto me saying son of man set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it now what does it mean by Mount Seir does it mean to go to a well this is the mountain called Mount Seir let me prophesy against this mountain no mountain represents government the government of Seir are Edomites let's look up this word Seir for you knew a, for you knew a cat's Back to the basics again. Shai, Shai, Yar, which by the way means um, hairy. You got scholars that saying, well, Esau means, Esau does not mean hairy. It means wasted away is he. Patriarch of the of the Horites. No, they were not. They were not Horites. The Horites were Canaanites. The Horites were living in the caves in that region where Seir is before the Edomites. Then the Edomites came in. The Horites are Canaanites. The inhabitants of Edom before the descendants of Esau. The descendants of Esau are the Edomites. So when Esau got that curse, the curse went on his children. Just like uh, Canaan, cursed be Canaan. Who who suffered the curse that Noah Noah put on uh, Canaan? 
Ham's son. The descendants of the Canaanites, we took their land. That's why we would justify, and the most I said, go into the land of Can Canaan, the Girgashites, the Hivites, the, the, uh, the Parasites, the Canaanites, the Amorites, and, the, and utterly kill them, kill their men, women, and children. Don't show them any mercy. The justification was because of Cain looking on uh, Noah's uh, nakedness. I'm sorry, it was Ham. It was Ham, but the one that got cursed was his son. The land of Edom, the land of Edom, and um, Amos 9 and 12, which is not 11, 11, 12, on down, it speaks about we're going to take the remnant of Edom. Now, right there in Amos 9, it's talking about the land, the land south of the Dead Sea. Apparently also called Mount Seir. So let's come on back. So when the Mosai said he hated Esau, that means he hated his his uh his offspring. So when it says prophesy against Seir, it's talking about pro prophesy against the Edomites. And say unto and say unto that it or them, thus saith Yahweh, behold. O Mount Seir, you Edomites, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Babylon the Great is also known as the land of Edom. I will lay the city's waste. He's talking about Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, because thou has had a perpetual everlasting hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Yasha Allah. A mountain didn't do that. It was the people that did that by the force of the sword in the time, because he was blessed with the sword, Isaac's blessing, and the time of their calamity, the calamity he's talking about uh, when they really came against us, the first time they really came against us was after they broke the yoke under King David and King Solomon. They were like, look, we're going to get them back. Oh, the Babylonians are going to take them down. Let's go help the Babylonians take them down. Let's go tell them where they're hiding. And the time that their iniquity had an end, the time of their iniquity had an end was in certain parts of history, but it's talking about now. After slavery, you were supposed to back off of us. Therefore, as I live, say of Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood. How could, where you ever hear of a mountain bleeding? You hit a mountain and a mountain bleeds. The mountain is talking about the people, the sons of Esau, the Edomites. The blood shall pursue, and blood shall pursue thee, uh, since thou, since thou has not hated blood, you love blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus I will make Mount Seir most desolate. Mount Seir is not talking about actual Mount Seir. It's talking about the land of Edom, which is Babylon the Great, which is the U.S. of A. And cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth, meaning Ain't nobody going to inhabit that land. Let me give you one more. Amos. One. Jump down to 11. And then I'm going to close. Thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Even though in during the per time period of 66 and 70 AD, when you had Edomite fighting side by side with us and dying in the process, they're still not going to be delivered. <laughs> they're still not going to be saved. They're going to... The Edomites that were against us and the Edomites that were for us, they're all going into captivity. 
because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetual, perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. And we just read that in uh, Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel 35. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which represents Babylon, which shall devour the palaces of Bozra. Modern Bozra is also here in the, in the States. Let me see where else am I going to go. There's so many places you can go. The elder, uh, uh, Genesis 25, the elder shall serve the younger. And they did under David and Solomon. And uh, really that was the only time the Edomites served us. So the Edomites are going to serve us again for a thousand years and then they're going to be burnt up Obadiah 118 uh, Lamentation 4 verse uh, 20 and 21 Ezekiel uh, 36 these two lands are ours in possession Obadiah the whole book the whole chapter the whole book of Obadiah, which is one chapter long, starting from the 10th verse. Apostle Paul said in Hebrews, though Esau sought it carefully with tears, there's still not going to be a... Uh, matter of fact, let me go to that. Hebrews... I believe it's twelve sixteen, if I'm not mistaken. So this is your time to go down to your pocket. It says, "Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it." That followeth, it, followeth, followeth. Lest there be any a fornicator or profane person as Esau, which represent the Edomites, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know, for ye know, how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was he was uh, rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully by tears, hey, the most I don't care about your tears. That shows you the the New Testament apostles knew about the Edomites. Even in uh, Romans chapter 9, the Apostle Paul mentions uh, Esau and Edom. So the Lord was definitely dealing with the Apostle Paul. He knew, who the, he knew who the Edomites were. He made two references about Edomites, Esau. Uh, another scripture, uh, Psalms 137. This uh, um, Isaiah 34, definitely talking about the Edomites. And this is why you have uh, these Christians constantly making videos on the Israelites. And they're constantly getting every, anything that you bring. See, we're like the juggernaut. We're the juggernaut, bitch. Anything you bring, any scholars... Any any time you bring something to us, and we, let's say we don't know about this, we'll do the research, and we'll use it against you. Vocab has failed miserably, man. They might take him out to the woods and disappear him, man. He failed miserably. Tazadak, Tazadak, you failed miserably. Mi miserably, the God sent comforter. They put they put him to sleep, bro. That's what they did. You know what I mean? People I know that had had it and recovered from it, didn't take the shots or nothing. Then the shots was going to save you any goddamn way. 
they 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 said I can't prove it, but they took they took him out. They said, "Man, we putting you to sleep, nigga." Cause you you failed. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Shalom.